Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my Fear the Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 13 review. And this episode is called Blackjack. And this episode came out on September 9th, 2018. So that's two months ago, a little over two months ago. Um, and I'm just going to get right into the review. Um, so this episode's pretty much the same thing as every other uh, Fear the Walking Dead episode where it had multiple storylines going on. So pretty much what I'm going to do is instead of trying to review the episode scene by scene, because I find that um, that makes it sloppy, I'm going to review it storyline by storyline. So I'll talk about the storylines all in one thing, like I typically have done it for the whole season and the last season and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to get right into this one. Uh, the storyline I'll talk about first is the stuff that went on between John and Strand, since that kind of took place separately from everything else. Um, and that's like the storyline I kind of like the most out of everything. Um, so I did like that a um, good portion of the episode was dedicated to John and Strand, because we really hadn't seen all that much since the uh, mid-season the premiere of this season. Um, so we really didn't know what they were doing. So I did like that a good portion of this episode was dedicated to them. And, um, pretty much we find out, I mean, technically though, you already kind of knew it though, if you watch the, um, the trailer for like the next episode and the, uh, sneak peek that, um, Strand and John are pretty much, um, marooned and they're surrounded by water, um, due to the storm. And, um, Strand's pretty much, been living the good life pretty much well not the good life but he's been kind of living at peace he's been rationing off food reading books but john's doing everything he can to escape us um to try to escape from this flood and he tries to build a boat out of um um out of uh uh wood pretty much from trees um which i thought was kind of cool very uh smart very innovative and pretty much uh, Strand comes out and immediately puts him down saying that uh, this plan isn't going to work, um, saying that he's not even going to get as far to that curve that they can see right in front of him. And John offers for Strand to go with him, saying that this boat can fit two people, but Strand doesn't want to because he's decided not to take up any foolishness anymore. Because um, he was doing just fine living the good life originally, but then... John forced him to go on to, um, to go look for a needle in the ha haystack, pretty much. Um, and J Strand said that he's done doing foolish things, uh, to try to survive, because now, pretty much, he's back to doing what he was doing in the last season. I did like, too, how he says, uh, that he doesn't really like to ride on boats, because that was obviously a reference to season two of Fear the Walking Dead, when he, um, the first half of it, pretty much, was um, on his boat. Um, and then, um, what else happens? Um, yeah, so, but Strand says that he's happy to watch John's plan fail. And John said he's doing this is because he's being resilient and he doesn't want to be die off this island because the wa uh, by the time the water clears out, uh, well, before the water even clears out, they would lose their rations and things like that. And he said that he would go get June and Charlie and come back for Strand. So he tries to um, use um, he tries to use his boat, but it ends up sinking. And we not only find out though that that's not the only problem with um, the maroon. There's also um, one of the infected slash wanderers because you got to go based off what they call them. And since both Strand um, and John are there, I want to call them both names, um, goes in the water, and it gets eaten by, um, an alligator, pretty much, or a gator, as they just call it, and pretty much that's a problem, um, because obviously they don't want to get eaten by a gator, um, so they have to do something to distract the gator as well, and I did like the scene that, uh, Strand and uh, John have with each other because Strand's pretty much trying to talk John out of going across the lake saying that it's not going to work and there's no point in doing that. Um, but John's doing this pretty much because he wants to find 
June again. Um, he keeps this tap he and he kept this ta taffy um as a symbol um to um as something to keep him going forward because he's gonna give her this taffy when he sees her. And he says that he found her once before. And I did like how Strand says, yeah, you may find her, but then you just end up back to where you were before. There's never really, like, a happy ending um, in a zombie apocalyptic world. Now, obviously, he doesn't say zombie apocalyptic type of world because this takes place in a universe where they don't know about zombies up until the zombie apocalypse. So they just say when the world went to shit. But it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so, um, I did like that back and forth that they had with each other. And then John has the idea um, that he see, he sees this car like up on a hill and he's going to push it down and um, he can't do it himself because um, of his wounds from the gunshot in season four, episode six. Um, so he has to have Strand do it and he's going to use parts from this car to make um, a raft. So Strand goes up to get it. He sees one of the infected inside the car. So he has to be very careful when he does this. But then he sees um, a bottle of alcohol in the car. And pretty much Strand um, goes for the alcohol. And this causes the car to um, roll down the hill and Strand to fall in the car. And pretty much the infected could have killed Strand, but he was lucky that this fall caused the infected to die. Um, and Victor's happy that he got the bottle on um, the bottle of alcohol and john's pissed at strand because um he pretty much just risked his life just for alcohol and you know they have a back and forth um and victor's upset that john's trying to risk his life um for someone that's pot that could possibly not be there and just for um you know nothing so i did like this scene um that they had together um and he said that he's trying to make the impossible possible, which I did like that scene too. Um, so then the next um, five, um, minute or so of the episode was uh, John building the raft. It was actually pretty cool to see him build this raft. And then John and Strand have a talk, and John wants to know pretty much if he's always been an alcoholic or if this is just rec um, recently. And Strand says that he's been an alcoholic pretty much since the zombie apocalypse. Um, has continued um, because he doesn't really have a lot of people uh, from his past. He And he's drinking to forget about the past because he doesn't have any more drinking buddies and he has nobody to go back to. And John says that he has somebody to go back to and he says that he would have a drink with uh, Strand if he helps him get across the maroon. Which I did like that because that gave um, Strand something to fight for. And... They wonder how they're going to end up getting distracting the gator so that way they don't get eaten. So Strand has this. Uh, so No, not Strand. John has this idea where he hooks up the battery um, of the car to the horn and uses it to attract the wanderers. Um, so that way the gator will eat them, giving, the, giving Strand and John enough time to get um, across the maroon. However, what ends up happening is... Um, and it, it actually seemed like a great idea, but what ends up happening is um, the battery dies, so the, this causes the infected to leave, and obviously because the gator's not distracted, um, the gator um, I, um, tries to tip over uh, John and Strand's boat, and Strand's upset about this pretty much because it didn't work, and the only reason that he believed it worked is because John believed it worked, and because it didn't work, um, he, they failed. So John wants to, um, and they try to roll the boat, but John um, is still hurt by the gunshot wound and drops his oar. So John has the idea where he wants him and Strand to swim across and see if they can get across. But obviously Strand doesn't think that's going to work because um, John won't be able to, because he doesn't think John's going to make it. So he forces John and Strand to surrender. Um, and the last thing you saw um, from Strand and John is, John ends up uh, eating the taffy uh, that he was going to give to June. And I thought this was very symbolic because that pretty much just showed that John has lost all hope that he's ever going to find June. And I thought it was actually a very nice uh, symbolic touch. So I did like to see uh, these two characters kind of come to together. I think they're really good characters in the show. It was kind of nice to see them come together. I thought it was awesome.
And then you pretty much had everything that took place um, between Luciana and Morgan. And their storyline kind of connected with each other, so I'll just kind of talk about theirs together. I'll do Luciana's first, though, because that's more important. Um, and what ends up happening is this was the first time you had seen Luciana. And also, at, like, um, a lot of the episode was showcased around her. Which I did like that the epi like I said before that the epic so the a lot of the episode was um, focused around Strand, um, John and Luciana because you really hadn't seen them since uh, the mid season premiere of um, season four. And what ends up happening is uh, she's pretty much she goes back to the library thinking that Charlie's going to be there to give her back her book, um, and. Um, I'm looking ahead because I'm trying to, um, pretty much what happens is she sees one of the infected and she kills it with a crowbar, and when she opens the door, she sees that there's this guy in there, um, and Luciana wants to help him, um, because he's in trouble, and we find out this guy's name is Clayton, and, um, he's surprised that Luciana is pretty much helping a total stranger, and, um, Obviously, we find out more about that later, but because the episode has to progress, we have to wait to find out about that type of stuff. So, Luciana tries to tear apart the car to help get Clayton out of there, but um, what ends up happening is um, we find out that pretty much if Luciana tears apart the car, um, Clayton will die because that, that, um, that car is keeping them together. So, I'm guessing something bad must have happened to him during the storm. Um, so, Luciana feels bad because pretty much there's nothing she can really do to help Clayton. So, Clayton says that um, one thing that Luciana can do for him is to have one final beer. So, the rest of the epi well, at least the rest of Luciana's story is Luciana trying to find the beer. As this is happening, um, we, before, um, in, in the opening part of the episode, um, we saw everything that went down with Morgan, Sarah, um, Althea, June, and Wendell, and also Jim, and what ends up happening is, um, what ends up, um, happening is they're trying to find, uh, uh, Quinn, uh, they go to mile 21 where he was, um, and they pretty much have no sign of Quinn, June tries to radio into him, and we, um, Jim, Sarah and Wendell think that this is a waste of time. They should just be heading to Virginia. And Morgan wants to look for um, um, Quinn because he wants to be a better person and help people. So we finally get a response. We hear we animated Quinn talking through the um, radio. And we hear the mystery woman um, that we've been seeing, the you know, the main villain throughout the past few episodes. Um, and says that um, she's made um, Quinn strong. And obviously Morgan recognizes her voice because they've met before. And uh, the mystery woman says that um, that um, Morgan, helping people makes people weak. Um, if um, you just leave people to the side, it will make you stronger. And um, what, what else? Um, what else does she say? And she said that if uh, Morgan doesn't come to realize it himself, she'll make it. She'll um, she'll make him realize it, and or make him strong. And she pretty much says that she knows about Morgan's past. Obviously, we know about Morgan's past too if you've watched The Walking Dead up until this point. So, um, she and says that she knows what Morgan's capable of, and that was pretty much the end of that conversation. I really liked it though. I thought it you know, set up, um, a nice story throughout the episode, so later on in the episode, Morgan, um, and everybody else are putting out the boxes, and, um, they write the typical message, and Morgan leaves a message saying that if you need any help to radio in the radio station, and, um, June wonders what Morgan, um, actually, I forgot a scene, actually, so Sarah, um, what to, um, Sarah, um, Wil not Wilbur, but I forget his name off the top of my head now. Uh, 
Um, Sawa and I've been saying his name too, like the of the whole episode. Wendell. Sawa, Wendell, Jim, and Althea um are trying to find um are trying to find out where Quinn could be, so they end up uh killing one of the infected or the walkers, whatever you want to call them. And um Sarah wants to know what Morgan was talking about when he said that she knows what she's capable of. And Morgan says he has some stuff he has to make up for. So they're leaving out the boxes. And what ends up happening is, um, yeah, Morgan leaves that message. And Morgan says that he's trying to make up for things. He tells June this. And pretty much Sarah, Wendell, and Jim all want to abandon um, helping, helping people. Because Morgan wants to help and find everybody else before this woman does. and. Um, Morgan says that threatens to steal the truck, um, if they do that, and, um, Sarah goes to threaten him and pull, pulls out a knife, and Morgan, um, who had, who had buried the, uh, walker, um, uses his Kino skills and hits her, hits, hits her with, hits her knife, and knocks the knife out of her hand with a, sh with his shovel. I like this scene, I thought it made Morgan look like, um, a hero. And then you had um, uh, Luciana continuing to look for the beer, and she had given uh, Clayton a radio so that way she he could keep talking to her. Um, and she tells Clayton that she wasn't able to find the beer, um, and she feels bad about it because she feels like she let Clayton down. And Clayton said that she didn't let him down, and tells her the story. Tells her the story about um, how before. The zombie apocalypse broke out. Um, he was um, he, he he didn't want to be around anybody, so he got a job so that way um, he couldn't be around anybody. Um, and when the zombie apocalypse broke out, he wasn't able to take care of the people that he cared about because he was working so much. And um, I like that they, she heard this message because pretty much um, she heard the message that no matter what the Help out the people that you care about. And then Luciana finally does find a beer. She finds it in one of the boxes that Morgan left out. And we knew that it was one of the boxes they left out because it had that message written on it. So she gives Clayton the beer. And um, Luciana asks Clayton what he, um, he used to do before the zombie apocalypse. And he said he was a truck driver. And I think what we were supposed to get from this was... This was the person that um, Wendell and Sarah stole the truck from. Um, because uh, they talk about how they... they um, because throughout the episode, they were giving information about who the guy was and saying that his name was Polar Bear. Well, I actually think his name was Bobby Clayton because I just find it kind of odd that he says that it, he's a truck driver. And, we and you know, all this stuff is going on. It would make sense. And I have a feeling we're all going to find that out later on in the season. Um, and Luciana said that she wanted to help because she's been wanting to help people because she had to watch the love of her life bleed to death. So she radios into the person who uh, left those boxes, boxes, thanking them because it was a big help. And obviously Morgan overhears this and responds back and they end up picking up Luciana. And Clayton had let her take a couple of notebooks that he had in the back, um, written about all types of truck stuff he had done, and um, pretty much what happens is Morgan radios into the mystery woman. Actually, no, that's not what happens next. What happens next is Charlie radios in from one of the mis uh, from one of the boxes, and obviously Alicia wasn't happy about this because she thought it was a trap. And then, you know, Morgan uh, radios into her. And we're left thinking that we're going to finally um, have all the group come back together. But then the mystery woman radios in and says that Morgan didn't learn their lesson because, um, and continues to make everybody weak. And Morgan does a big inspirational speech talking about how helping people doesn't make people um, weak. It makes people stronger. I thought it was a great speech and I loved it. And then um, the risk. Um, Sarah notices that the mystery woman's starting to come upon her because she sees the SWAT truck, and 
they try to escape um they try to uh drive um you know they get into a car chase and uh the SWAT truck catches up to her she pulls out the guns from the SWAT truck and um they they go off and Morgan and everybody duck and Alicia and Charlie overhear this and pretty much the episode ends we don't really know what happens um and I did like this because the mystery woman says that now you have to start to lose people. So I'm assuming she did this to make um, Alicia and Charlie think that um, Morgan and everybody else died. I thought that was really well done. And that was pretty much the end of this episode of Fear of the Walking Dead. And I got to say, I really liked this episode. I thought it was some great character development with Luciana. And I liked her, um, you know, interaction with Clayton. I liked uh, the stuff that went on with John and um, Strand, and I obviously liked the Morgan storyline with the mystery woman. So I actually really liked this episode. If I had to rate this episode, I thought it was really good. I'm going to give it a solid B, um, and that's pretty much the end of this review. Um, as for what everybody else thought of this episode, they pretty much uh, they uh, thought it was a good episode as well. Uh, they gave it a 71%, which is a pretty okay rating. Um, out of seven reviews, um, they, and it got an average rating of eight, an 8 out of 10, actually. So that's actually a pretty good review. Um, it got five, actually, thinking about it, actually, I don't know why I said it was a really good episode. I actually, I shouldn't say it was a really good episode. I actually liked the episode. So I'm going to give it a B minus, actually. It was a good episode, but not a great episode. So I think I overrated a little bit. So I'm going to give it actually a B minus. Um, but, um, out of seven reviews, five gave it a fresh review and two gave it rotten reviews. And, um, this was on Rotten Tomatoes. On IMDb, it got a 7.8 out of 10 and pretty much, um, it got a, no, it's not 7.8, 7.6 out of 10. And, um, uh, pretty much, uh, some people really liked it. Some people thought it was all right. Some people didn't like it. There was a weird thing about the beer sponsorship, which I didn't get, but whatever. And that's pretty much. Uh, the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content. Click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. Make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers and All the Talking Native YouTube channels, which this is the All the Talking Native YouTube channel, so I don't know why I said that, but that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.